was surprised to find out that the average North American family goes through five to seven different sets of cookware in a lifetime. Most people at any given time have many different kinds of cookware on the go. They don't look alike, they don't cook alike, they don't last the same length of time. What we have here is a complete 22 piece set of Nutristall cookware. And what I'm going to do is take some time here to show you how the pieces work together. First of all, we have these utility bowls. There's two different sizes of them and they come with a plastic lid so that you can actually store food in the refrigerator. Now one of the benefits is, is that it's made out of surgical steel so that the food will never react with your bowl. The bowls also work as a dome lid. So one of the things that you can do is cook like a larger volume of food, let's say a standing rib roast or something like that. Now, one of the drawbacks is, is that the lids don't have a knob on the top so the company invented a heat resistant suction knob so it allows you to remove the lid without burning your fingers or having to use oven mitts. Now the bowls also work as a double boiler. So if you like to melt chocolate or heat milk, you can do that in there quite efficiently. The lids also work with the utility bowls so when you're taking food out of the fridge, you can actually reheat it right back in the same unit that you stored it in. Stack cooking is a real benefit using this cookware. Using the large and the small utility bowl at the same time, you can actually stack cook. If you ever wish you had an extra burner on the stove, rather than turning food down to low, you can actually turn the burners off and stack the food up. That way, you're efficiently using one burner to cook with three different vessels. Another feature that we have is the utility rack. And the utility rack sits inside the eight quart. Now we could be cooking a roast beef and vegetables in the bottom and bake a cake right on top of the roast with the small utility bowl and then use the large utility bowl to cover it to create an oven effect right inside. So we have roast beef, vegetables and cake for dessert all in one unit. So that's the efficient use with these utility bowls. Now the utility rack has another feature. It comes in two parts so that it can be used in two different sizes of cookware. You can see that rather than just drilling holes, we actually created a grater system so that you can grate cheese or carrots, carrots on top of a salad or cheese right on top of some broccoli or cauliflower that you've just cooked. And the adapter ring can be used in the skillet. The skillet now can be used for frying some bacon or frying some breakfast sausages. Take the cover off of the four quart and now you've limited the spattering. The air can pass through, through the holes around the utility ring and get your bacon or your sausages nice and crisp but keep the spattering down to a minimum on top of your stove. So it really virtually eliminates the mess. We also have a colander insert which got nicknamed the degreaser. Colander insert works over here with the four quart roaster. What you can do is put some water in the bottom about an inch or two, preheat it on medium high, put the colander inside. Now you can take frozen breakfast sausages or hamburger meat and defrost, cook and take the fat and grease out of the sausages or hamburger meat. Now let's just say you've cooked some hamburger meat in here. We can use the lid as a trivet, set the hamburger meat off on the side and you've got the greasy water. Dump out the greasy water. The base is still charged up with heat energy so now we can dump our hamburger meat for browning back into the saucepan and then you can add your sauce like your spaghetti to make a spaghetti sauce or a lasagna. Also, we've got this utility basket that works over here with the eight quart. It's great for cooking clams, mussels, scallops or if you want to deep fry for draining it just hangs right on the side of the eight quart. Works wonderful for that. Now a hot lid, I love this feature. If you're always, any, anytime you're looking for a place to put a hot lid they all hang in the short handles. Now for serving if you take a hot lid and set it on the counter, it's balanced so it'll never burn or scorch your countertop. 
but the skillet will actually sit right in the lid. So you can serve right out of your cookware. That does two things. First of all, it protects your table. Second of all, it re-insulates that base to keep your food hot much longer. Okay, next we're going to cook something for you that's a little bit different than what you've ever seen. First of all, we've preheated our eight quart roaster and this is what we're going to cook a roast beef some vegetables and a cake for dessert, all in one unit here. Now, with the roast beef, what we've done is we've cut little slots in it and we've put whole garlic cloves in. We've probably got about eight or ten of them in there. So we're going to take the roast and we're going to lay it in this preheated eight quart roaster. So we're going to sear it and brown it. Remember, if you're going to sear or fry anything, you always want to preheat it first. So we're going to let that start browning. And then over here we're going to mix up a cake mix that we're going to cook inside with the roast. So we're just going to use a uh, Betty Crocker cake mix. And it calls for three eggs and it also calls for a third of a cup of cooking oil. Now normally you put oil in a cake because normally when you bake a cake in the oven you don't put a lid on it. So what happens is the moisture in the cake would just evaporate. So we have a pretty small oven here once we put the cover on and one of the benefits of this type of cooking is being able to actually bake a cake without having to add any extra oil. All right, so the roast is searing up nice. So we're just going to mix the cake up. Now this is going to be a chocolate cherry jubilee cake. It's upside down. So it's very easy to do and it's very impressive if you have friends over. Very simple, it's very easy. So once the roast is finished searing, we're going to put some onions in with it, then we're going to add these potatoes, we're going to add these carrots, and then we're going to put the cake on top of the roast and the vegetables. Just going to add a little bit of water. Okay, let's have a look. See how the roast is doing? It's searing up very nicely. So it's releasing from the pan, so we're going to turn it over. Oh, it's beautifully brown. All right, now we're going to add some onions. Then we'll add some seasoning. Adding lots of onions and seasoning, or uh, lots of onions, I should say. Um, makes for a really nice gravy because one of the things you're going to notice is the roast is going to shrink very little when it's cooked this way on top of the stove. So we're going to put some carrots and some potatoes. In with the roast. Now we've got the roast on the temperature right now on the stove. It's approximately medium to medium high. So there's going to be a fair amount of food in there so it's going to take a fair amount of energy to actually be able to cook it. Okay. Now we're going to put some cherry pie filling into our utility bowl. And this is the bottom now, but when we turn the cake over, because it's an upside down cake, it's going to be the top. We did pre-grease uh, the pan so it'll help the cake to release when it's finished cooking. Okay, so we're just going to pour the cake mix right on top of the cherry pie filling. Spread that around a little bit. Now this whole meal takes about 40 to 45 minutes to cook. Very simple, very easy. 
very fast. Okay, here's where we use our utility rack. Actually, I'm going to put a little more seasoning on the vegetables. We're going to cover the vegetables with the utility rack. Now we're going to set the cake on top of the roast and the vegetables. Very simple. And now we're going to use the larger utility bowl as a lid. Now we're going to leave this on medium high until it just starts to bubble out the sides a little bit and the lid will start to float. It'll be hot to the touch right in the center. So we're just going to leave this go. It'll take about five or ten minutes for it to heat up and then we'll be able to turn it down to low. We're going to cook it for about ten to fifteen minutes a pound. It depends how you like your roast done. All right, so we'll be right back and uh, when we turn the roast down to low. Okay, we've had the roast on for a few minutes. It's been on medium the whole time and you can see it's just bubbling out of the sides a little bit and the lid is very hot to the touch right in the center. So now we're going to turn it down to low and we're going to cook it for about 30 minutes on low. It's only about a three, pound, a three pound roast in there so about 10 to 15 minutes a pound is plenty to cook it. So we'll check back in about 30 minutes. It's been about 30 minutes since our roast has been turned down to low so let's have a look and see how it's doing. Remember the cake is on top. I'm going to tip the lid back away in case there's any moisture on the underside of the lid. We want to make sure it runs away from the cake. Look at the cake. It looks beautiful. Okay. Now with the cake, what we're going to do, remember the cherries are on the underside so this is going to be an upside down cake. We're going to set the plate on top. We'll flip it over and we'll let that cool on the side. That's for dessert. And then we'll be ready to serve the uh, we'll be ready to serve the roast beef and the vegetables. Okay, so here's our cake. That we'll get to show you later. And then we'll have a look over here. We'll take out the roast and we'll let you see all the juice uh, to make a real wonderful gravy. Next we're going to cook for you some salmon and a little bit of asparagus. Now we're not going to sear or fry the salmon so we're going to use a cold skillet to start. What's really nice about this dish of course is that you can do it all in one pan so you only have one to wash up at the end. So we're going to lay the salmon fillet in there with the asparagus right beside it. We'll put um, a little bit of Italian seasoning on the salmon. Put a couple of lemon slices on there. Now we're going to cover. We're going to turn the stove to medium heat. When the indicator reaches between 40 and 60 in the green zone, then we're going to turn the heat down to low just for about five or six minutes and the salmon and the asparagus will be ready to be served. Okay, our salmon should be ready to be served. What we did is we heated it up between 40 and 60 degrees in the green zone. Then we turned it down to low for about six or seven minutes. Let's have a look. Oh wow, it looks fantastic. It's just flaky, done to perfection. We'll set the cover down as a trivet. Dinner's ready to be served. Bon appetit.